so last week I noticed my coworker Lisa doing some online shopping. I don't know what Check this out. Um, I think it looks better in green. Uh, um, I, what are you talking about? I'm working on my social media plan. It's not black. So let's talk to her right now, Lisa. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Very good. So seriously though, are you actually shopping for a vehicle right now? Really just got started looking. I've just, you know, been seeing what's out there and uh, considering what would be best for the growing family. So I asked Lisa if she'd be interested in hosting this episode and learning about electric vehicles from an expert here at NRCAN, Yves Madar. Is that something that would interest you? I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for suggesting that. Let's do it, let's go. All right. How How's it you? going? Very well, and you? Good. I'm good, thanks. So I see you have some information for me. We've been um, looking at your fuel consumption. Now, with that information, when you're shopping for a new car, uh, you can bring that with you and you can say, well, okay, I can afford to spend a little bit more on the monthly payment of my vehicle right. because I'll be saving so much more on fuel. Right. Electricity is a lot cheaper than, than gasoline. So when you're looking at the total cost of ownership, mm. well, now you can add uh, fuel cost to that and really make it uh, a good analysis of your needs. Okay. So there's a few models out there um, that I think would be suitable for you. We've got an EV out front if you want to go uh, for a test drive. Yeah, let's do it. So this is a vehicle we'll be test driving, Lisa. It's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. One of the benefits of EVs is uh, because you're running in electric mode or PHEV like this, because you're running in electric mode so much, uh, your maintenance costs are a lot less. Mm. So your intervals between oil changes are a little bit longer. Oh. Um, and also because of that regenerative braking, your brake pads and rotors also last a lot longer because you're using the engine to brake. So another thing that, uh, that helps to reduce your maintenance costs or total cost of ownership Foot on the brake, yeah, okay. Push the start button, turn the dial to drive. The rest, it just drives like a regular car. So. Okay, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Oh, wow. It feels really smooth. Yeah. It barely even sounds like it's, like it's running, you know? Like that's, yeah. that's great. So we talked a little bit about the cost of the vehicle. There's a federal rebate, and also in some provinces, there's some incentives uh, to encourage consumers to, uh, to buy electric vehicles or zero emission vehicles. This vehicle, plug-in hybrids, do apply the rebates. Oh, okay. Let's recap. To expand on a rebate Eve just mentioned, battery electric, hydrogen fuel cell, and longer range plug-in hybrid vehicles, those with an electric range equal to or greater than 50 kilometers, are eligible for an incentive of $5,000. Shorter range plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, those with an electric range under 50 kilometers, are eligible for an incentive of $2,500. Check out the link in the description for more info. Also, while the initial price of an EV is often higher than its gas-powered counterpart, if you look at the costs involved over the lifetime of the vehicle, you may actually end up saving money with an EV. Let's take a look at a few online tools that can help you see these savings for yourself, regardless of which EV you're considering buying. First of all, check out Plug & Drive's EV Comparison Tool. This handy webpage has a library of EVs available for sale in Canada. You can click on a vehicle to see more information. What's really cool is that in this section here, you can compare each model to a similar gas vehicle. You can customize the sliders on the left to reflect your personal situation, how much you drive, current price of gas, and so on. And then, on the right, you can see these charts which clearly break down how much you'd spend on each vehicle. They also show you at what point the lower cost of fuel and maintenance from the EV would let you break even and then start saving money relative to if you purchased a gas vehicle. 
Here's another fascinating resource to check out. It's based on a large study done in the States by a team at MIT. They looked at nearly every car on the market and found that over their lifetime, EVs were better for the environment and, in some cases, your pocketbook. Check out their interactive tool at carboncounter.com to see for yourself. And finally, if you want to see how much you'd save on fuel with an electric vehicle, Anarchan also has an online tool that can help. If you already have a vehicle or brand in mind, you can select it from the drop-down menus here. Next, in the personalized menu, you can input things like your typical yearly driving distance, the current cost of gas, and the current cost of electricity. You can skip this step if you want and just see results based on averages, but this helps you tailor things to your situation. Switching between these tabs shows you either information for conventional or battery-powered vehicles. In this column, you can see how much you'd spend in gas per year, and here, how much you'd spend in electricity. If you'd like to take a closer look at certain vehicles, you can save them, which puts them up here so you can see the info side by side. We've also looked at um, your, your longest distance. One trip is 26 kilometers. Uh, your shortest is about uh, 2.4 kilometers. So you're like, you don't have to worry about things like range anxiety uh, right. when, you're, when you're looking at an electric vehicle because most EVs will, will have the range that you need uh, for an entire day. Hybrids, plug-in hybrids, battery electric vehicles have a feature where you can make fuel while you're driving. The regenerative braking, coming to a stop, all these times uh, where, where you're applying the brake, that electricity, that energy is harnessed and, and, and used to recharge the batteries. Oh wow, and I notice here um, on the console in the front, that's really great that you're able to see as you're traveling um, how much of a charge you have, right? Yeah. So it's, it's a cold day, it's a um, we've got the, the heat going and, uh, you know, does that have an impact on the, on the performance of the, of the vehicle? Yeah, well, because we're, in, because we're in EV mode, the heat uh, is, is generated with, with electricity. And so that is going to consume some of your uh, range. So for this particular vehicle, the EV range is 50 kilometers. And in this, the winter, it's gonna, it can be a little bit below that, uh, depending on your driving behavior, how you use the heat, where you park. There's been a few studies done on EV performance in winter to measure how much cold weather affects a vehicle's range. For example, in 2019, the American Automobile Association found that at minus 7 degrees Celsius, EVs experience a 12% loss of range. When you add the impact of climate control, that dropped even further to 41%. Or, in another case, Geotab looked at real-world data collected from gasoline vehicles, battery electric vehicles, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. They also found cold temperatures affect battery range, and that it varies depending on the driver's behavior and the car model. Both these sources mentioned that one of the biggest reasons for the range drop is HVAC use. Heating the cabin draws a lot of power from the battery, so they recommend drivers precondition their EVs. In other words, use an app to preheat your EV in the morning while it's still plugged in, so you won't need to use as much heat while you're driving. And keep in mind that even the worst case range for battery electric vehicles would still cut it for most people's round trip daily commute. The average rebate qualifying battery electric vehicle available for sale in Canada has a range of about 300 kilometers. At worst case, 41% reduction, that's about 177 kilometers, still well above the average person's daily commute of about 15 kilometers. Geotab found that gasoline-powered vehicles also have a reduction in range in cold weather. And they point out that when you look at the impact on your wallet, in most cases, you actually end up saving money with an EV because of the lower cost of electricity. Although cold weather has a larger impact on plug-in vehicles on a percentage basis, the financial impact of temperature is typically more significant for conventional vehicles. In most cases, the payback for electrical vehicles actually improves as the weather gets colder. So, in summary, it's worth keeping the effect of cold weather in mind when you're shopping for an EV, but it may impact you less than you'd think. So is this a good spot? This is start? a great spot. We'll do a walk around. So, First thing you'll notice is where you're going to uh, plug the vehicle in. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah that's so, a good one to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All EVs 
use this kind of standard in Canada other than Tesla. They have their own, but okay. most EVs come with a level one charger, so you can plug that anywhere. Any like wall outlet. Oh, just a regular wall outlet. Regular wall outlet with a level two charger. Level two is more like your dryer plug. So with that, uh, you can uh, charge a little bit quicker. Some plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are starting to be able to charge on level three as well, but it's a smaller battery, so it doesn't take as long to recharge. And you're mentioning that it'll tell me if it's charging. Where do I verify that? Some EVs have a, a light on the dash. It'll go on. Okay. Um, other ones, it's like around this little charging door that a little light will come on. It can okay. also give you like how much it's recharged or how much you'll need to recharge it. So you can be sure that, uh, you know, in the morning uh, you'll have your, your full charge. And, and you really think about it like gasoline. You know, people say, well, oh, how long does it take to recharge? Well, it really depends. Are you fully depleted or are you only 50% right. depleted? Just like when you go to the gas station, if your tank is half full, it'll take you less time than it's if right. it's completely empty, right? right? It depends on what your starting point. I'm just gonna open the door here and, uh, and pop the hood. This one has an electric motor and a gas engine. So this is your gas motor and then paired to it is the electric motor. So that's what's driving um, the vehicle when it's in electric mode. That's also what's doing the regenerative braking. So anything in orange is the high voltage equipment. Now, these vehicles are very safe. If ever in the case of a collision, power is cut, you don't have to worry about getting a shock. In Ontario, uh, we've got the green plates on the highway here. You can go into the high occupancy lanes so you can get past traffic a little bit quicker. But That's otherwise, a nice bonus. <laughs> nice bonus, not have to wait in traffic. Otherwise, it looks just like a normal vehicle, except for you know, how quiet and energy efficient and uh, how much you're helping to uh, reduce your emissions. Okay, great, thanks, this was fun. So guys, how'd it go? It was great. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks okay. so much for uh, bringing Lisa to me. Hey, no Thank problem. You so your next much. car's an EV. I Thank think you. it might be. Yeah. Take Thanks, care. Steve. Bye. Yeah, I, I had never driven an EV before and it, it felt really comfortable. It was really smooth. Um, I could really see myself driving one of these on a regular basis. That's good. I'm glad you had a good time. So if you have some suggestions for Lisa, what kind of vehicle she should get, if you have some personal experiences you want to share in the comments below, please do so. Do the normal YouTube things where you like and subscribe. Um, also, if you have any questions about what Eve, uh, the information that he provided, uh, there's going to be some links in the description as well to some resources. Or leave a comment below and Eve will get back to you. Thank you so much and join us next time.